Hello and welcome. My name is Fabian, and this is the next episode of Working on Outcast 2. Today we're going to talk about something very special to me: the lyrics for the soundtrack of Outcast 2. And to do this, we will be joined by none other than the original composer Lenny Moore. I am so happy to have him on this channel, and thank you so much, Lenny, to contributing in this video series. So, without further ado, follow me through the Daoker and enter the creation of Outcast 2. First off, THQ Nordic is preparing some amazing promotional videos and behind the scenes stuff for the fans about Outcast 2. And one of those videos will take an in depth look at the creation of the soundtrack for Outcast 2. Because of this upcoming video special, we will not focus on the soundtrack as a whole in this video, but instead will focus on one part of it, the creation of the lyrics, which I contributed to. Are you ready? So let's dive right in. Hi everybody, I'm Lenny Moore, I'm the composer for Outcast 2. Uh, I was the composer on Outcast 1, and you know, when we get to Outcast 9 or 10, I guess I may still be the composer, hopefully, we'll see. What can you tell us about this passage from the trailer? Like it's an announcement to everybody, you know, like for those, you know, like, you know, those born of the water essence, those born of the earth essence, those born of fire, those born of air, listen. So it's <laughs> basically like everyone something. out there, this is the announcement, just listen now and pay attention. Yeah, and since it was an announcement trailer, <laughs> and it wasn't necessarily that direct, uh, it was just, uh, the other part of it is, when the choir comes in a little bit later. It's the really pretty romantic part. And it's uh, Gemin Vorta, Gemin Vorta uh, Karai. Which translates to a man becomes the protector of life. Which was sort of my version of oh, using Agazork to describe uh, the main character, Kader's slave. I think it's a beautiful line also for the trailer because it also announces the return from Cutter Slate to Adelpha. So I think yeah. it's perfect, um, perfect fit. Who came up with the idea of using Agazork as the language for the lyrics? There, I'd say it was a joint call. It was you and me. <laughs> <laughs> because um, you had already written some lyrics and you know, we might have to flip the script here and have me ask you some questions because um, with the songs, were you looking to create um, sort of like a folk folk songs or folk material that was stuff that was within the world? What was what was your impetus for uh, creating those songs? Um, like, you know, in Outcast 1, we had this one song in the game in Agazork. And um, I really liked it. It was like a, a cool quest, like learning the song, singing the song with another character. And it was such an iconic song. I came up with the idea, why not write uh, three more songs for the other yachts? So right. I played with the words and rhymed them and came up with some lyrics about them. And this was my starting point to create more like, yeah, folklore for the talents mm -hmm. because um, they play music in the game a lot and there's already this one song. So why not more songs? There should be a lot more uh, like musical tradition in the universe. I think what happened was I sort of riffed off of that idea and I've always been somebody who believes strongly that the text is important. And even in the original Outcast, the Latin text is very specific. It's from Virgil's The Ennead, which is a swashbuckling tale of blood and gore. 
about the founding of the Roman civilization um, by Virgil. And it is, it's like one of those old epic tales, kind of like Homer's Odyssey and Iliad. So I've always had this fascination with text and it has a meaning because like classically, the original outcast, the main titles, it's Arma Virumque Cano, which are the first lines of the Ennead, which Arma is a call to arms and it's, um, it's like a war call. And in Verum Cano, it, it basically, it's, um, the English translation would be, I sing of war and a man of war. Most of the audience, if they've never learned Latin, they don't know uh, what that all means, but they feel it. And that's to kind of come back to what I was originally talking about. That's one of the coolest things about text for any sort of vocal component within a score is it does carry a meaning and even if you don't necessarily understand the text uh you you get it you you understand the meaning and on top of that in the original game we were using the moscow symphony orchestra and choir and russians tend to roll their r's really hard and they sing arma and <laughs> uh that's got a cool energy to it and i knew that they would do that <laughs> so that adds a lot of kind of fight so to speak to the the battle cry so how did you approach writing in Agazork so how did you start the process or how did you approach it had to learn the language a little deeper. So luckily <laughs> we had somebody <laughs> who was our lore expert. Um, uh, he was putting together that glossary, you know, and, uh, I think, you know, we collaborated a little bit in the sense of there were some things that weren't particularly set in how the language is spoken and some things that were. And you were great. We had a lot of conversations early on uh, in us collaboratively figuring it out. You know, like, and it's almost like every every word has certain inflections. Like, where are the stress points? Is it my sayom or my sayom? <laughs> yeah, I have to say that was a really a uh, fun time for me too. To because it was the first time for me actually to think about how should be the correct way to speak a world how what's the pr correct pronunciation because we were months away from recording dialogue and it helped us a lot later on because with all your groundwork or our collaboration there with the pronunciation was much easier later on to record the dialogues and i've just recently listened to all the agazork lines in the game and it's really cool because all the actors really they sound agazork yeah well part of that is because i'm a big nerd and so uh, so that documentation is always really important in these kind of processes so like as we were figuring out pronunciation we had like like a, a google doc type of uh, document that we could share and so i'd be updating the pronunciation <laughs> As I, as I figured stuff as, you know, I figured stuff out with you, it, we'd like put that stuff in there and, and sort of just build on, on that. So, uh, that, that part of collaboration, I think was, uh, just helpful for both of us. So it started with that. It was just started with like learning the language, but then there's certain components of how Agazork works. So like, where's the noun, where's the verb, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, which is really fun. And then, so like, once I knew the sort of general structure, And I think what we realized is that there's not really an order. Everything gets flopped around a little bit. So, so that allowed a little bit of freedom to make creative choices. And when you're putting a lyric together, and I'm a, I am not the greatest lyricist at all, but I think, you know, when I'm dealing with a language that nobody knows, we're okay. <laughs> so, but what I was doing was trying to take the Agazoric language and come up with lyrics that had some poetry to them. You know, so part of it was thinking about what I want to talk about. So like the translation from the original Latin text into Agazork was fun to try and see if I could translate it into Agazork. Uh, but then some of the other material is focused around a central character and what is that character about? 
and how would that character express themselves in song? The idea of that lyric is, it's more like a prophecy kind of vibe because it, the, the Agazark language is so um, truncated. It's, you know, it, uh, what it does is it, it almost creates the poetry uh, because it's just a couple of words. So like, I know the gods is a little specific, you know, so this particular character knows all the yods within the, the outcast universe. And good or evil, you can take it a couple of ways based on what you just heard. If you're, if it's, I know the gods, I know the good ones, I know the evil ones, that's one interpretation. The other interpretation might be, especially when I go good or evil, harmony or war, life or death, everything's the same. That it kind of adds this little twist uh, at the end that, you know, it's kind of like using a yin-yang philosophy of like polar opposites of things, but what the Indian represents is that everything is together yeah you know? and that plays into thematic ideas that are part of the outcast universe such as the connection between earth and adelpha you know it, it just it has a certain kind of pseudo religious spiritual kind of reference um especially when you start talking about things like prophecies and stuff like that i'm really thankful for all the lyrics you wrote because i think um they are so poetic and they make an extra layer to all the music. I grew up like 20 years, I'm listening to your soundtrack from the first game. It's still my favorite game soundtrack of all time, of course. And to have all these extra layers, all these extra prophecies, callings uh, and meanings there, uh, that's special to me. As you said before, maybe most players won't really understand it or recognize it directly but indirectly it's it's feeling it's an extra layer it's telling a story of its own it's telling uh something else there's also this thing about gamers and or actually i should just defer this to this thing about nerds in general and i'm like one of the biggest nerds around um we get into the weeds a lot we really like to dig into um yeah, you know, just crazy details. I think they enrich the experience. So when you're talking about layers and what we're doing, it's just it seems like it's fairly normal to to put in lots of layers when you're nerdy like me <laughs> and and you're you're doing a project like this. I, I like to get absorbed in what the story is and and try and make sure that the music is supporting the story in a way that's um, uh, part of all the, that kind of layered approach, that there's a lot deeper meaning to how music works in any sort of media. To wrap up, I just want to say to everybody who's a fan of Outcast and is looking forward to Outcast 2 coming out, um, that it's been definitely a big labor of love for me. Uh, this was my very first video game that I ever scored. So there's a special place in my heart for, uh, for Outcast. And the fact that it finally got an Outcast 2 made is like just wonderful, wonderful, like blessing. And <laughs> um, the odds were smiling upon us. And that part of it is uh, I'm so excited about. Uh, I'm so excited that the fans will be able to see a new story and a continuation of, of, of this great franchise. And I'm uh, looking forward to the release. <laughs> I'm looking forward to playing the game myself. Um, I will probably not get much work done. So this is it for this moon. I hope you enjoyed it and please excuse the quality of this video. We had to record this online because Lenny lives far away in California. I live in Austria, so we had to do this digitally. As always, if you like what I'm doing, please consider supporting this channel.
I hope to see you all back on the next one. May the odds bless you. Maya Afar.